I'm Glenn McGuinness and this is Outburst on the program. Does social media have a positive or negative effect on Canadian politics? Negative, I'd say. Um, I would say it has pros and cons. It gets the word out there, uh, what's going on politically. But yeah, it's a lot of unresearched opinions being shared. The way people discuss and debate politics in recent years has changed exponentially with the advent of tools like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X, just to name a few. While these platforms enable people to have political conversations more freely and more often, there are also some people who feel these platforms can help distort the facts. We sent our cameras out to ask if these platforms are an essential part of modern day political discussions or do they do more harm than good? Our question. Does social media have a positive or negative effect on Canadian politics? Politics specifically, um, I would say it has pros and cons. Um, but in general, I think my outlook is probably that it skews towards the negative. Um, I don't know, it's just kind of an intuition. I don't know if I have anything in specific. I think it has a positive effect because it gives people a voice and a platform to express their needs and to share information. Um, definitely positive. Um, it's, a, it's a means for people to be able to you know, express how they feel um, and just basically talk about what's going on um, on the island and let other people who are not really as aware, um, aware as well of what's going on. I think pretty negative, but it could be positive if it was put in a slightly different direction, but I, I think right now it's kind of negative. I mean, it could be both. I think it can be really polarizing and some like people benefit from the polarizing because you get more comments and engagement if you're posting things that are controversial. But also it's great to have like open dialogue and it's an opportunity for people who wouldn't be involved to like learn and get involved. Yeah, so. but negative in that because we can't share news on social media, you're only getting opinions and you can get a lot of false narratives and you can't get fact anymore on the internet in Canada, in, like through social media. Mm -hmm. But if you use it wisely, I would say it's a great um, way to like have great debates and learn more about your politicians and politics locally and federally as well. Negative, I'd say for the most part. I mean, it's a little bit of both. Like, I like going on there and kind of seeing the diversity and things, and people can root for what they want to root for on social media. But I mean. People probably use it too much and exploit it to spread their views in negative ways. So, I'm not the right person to answer this, but my initial gut feeling is negative. I think there's too much uh, false news out there and too many narratives that we all fall for that aren't exactly correct, and I don't think it's always used in the best manner. No, I think it brainwashes anybody that don't have any anything that you know any thought of their own really. They go on and they see somebody saying, "Oh, well, Justin Trudeau did this, this, and this, and this guy's this, this, and this," and if they don't really know much about politics, and that's the first comment they see, that's what they're going with. So I don't get, I don't think they get to make the right decision. So yeah, I think it's a negative effect. No, that's, that's a tough one. It depends on, I guess, what kind of uh, slant you want to put on some of the things you read. Uh, don't always believe everything you uh, you see and, and uh, read on social media. Uh, if you do see something that you're not quite sure what it means, uh, do a little bit of research. I think it's... Uh balanced sometimes. Uh, oftentimes there's so much negativity out there that people latch on to negativity as opposed to uh, uh, really thinking for themselves and listening. So I think it may very well have more of a negative impact than a positive impact. Well, I think it can have a bit of both but uh, I think overall I find it negative because people uh, tend to express the negative of what's going on more than the positive. I think it has a negative effect because most of what they put into the social media is crap, <laughs> if I'm allowed to say that word. <laughs> so you're not really getting the true story. So social media can destroy things without even giving it a thought. People don't matter. I think it has a positive effect. I think it it's, gets the word out there uh, what's going on politically. 
I think it's a, an avenue to get to get the message across to the to, to the public a lot faster. Whether it be accurate, uh, it certainly gets the message out. Gives us at least it gives people the opportunity to, to have a better understanding of what's going on as opposed to just print media. I think it has both uh, positive and negative effects. The positive being it can inform the public, give them valuable information to make informed decisions. Um, negative being it can be used for propaganda, it can be used to push a narrative that could be false, it could be used to um, polarize uh, groups of people. So that's what I think is the good and the bad of, of both. So it's like a dual-edged uh, sword, I, I guess. Uh, it definitely has a negative effect on Canadian politics. I think with it, it feeds into the vitriol of uh, everybody, like everybody's so angry at each other. It just, it, it makes us rage click uh, at each other and engage more. And I think more engagement is always, you know, pr Facebook and the others are always looking at uh, more engagement, you know, prioritizing that over anything, regardless of the politics. They don't care about left or right. Um, but yeah, just people just want to argue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the content, yeah. Uh, social media is a place for people to say more mean things without having to deal with confrontation and seeing people face to face, their body language, their feelings is a much more real effect. Social media is a place to be cruel and dark and mean with no consequences or consideration for other people's thoughts and opinions. Uh, I would say it has a negative effect on Canadian politics, uh, given that there's so much misinformation out there. Uh, people have opinions based off stuff they've potentially just overheard and are spreading it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of unresearched opinions being shared. Paying taxes is not a choice, it's an obligation, and Canadians pay their fair share to all three levels of government. Taxes collected go to things like infrastructure, education, and of course, healthcare, just to name a few. But at the end of the day, it's your hard earned money and where that money goes could be up for debate. So we sent our cameras out to ask people if they feel their money is being invested where they would like. Our question. Where do you think your tax dollars should be spent? We need to spend them very effectively and efficiently, and we need to spend more money on developing the economy. Part of that involves infrastructure. Part of that involves attracting new businesses, especially the disruptor businesses to Canada. Uh, we can't keep spending our, our money on sunset businesses. To a large extent, we have to invest in, in, in education, uh, but we have to make it possible to move some of the research that we're doing to a commercial venture. That's really important, but if the economy doesn't become more productive, the Canadian dollar is going to continue to, to go down and we'll have trouble paying for necessary infrastructure, health care, education, and so on. We've really got to spend money on increasing the productivity of, productivity of the Canadian economy. Well, I think they should go to uh, health care, education, um, you know, all the other good things the government does, and I think they should get the army into the northern part of the country to uh, guard our northern shore and get them out of other countries? Uh, everything related to health, um, because I think that we uh, have a lot of people that are going old, so we have, to, we have to take care of them, so yeah, health. Well, I think housing is one of the main issues as well, and job opportunities, like trying to uh, revamp this economy, which has been greatly impacted since COVID, I would say, for me at least, that would be some of the main priorities. Mental health, yeah, addiction, Housing rehab, yes, or wherever the experts, indigenous, uh, reconciliation. Mm, I agree. Stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I think they're doing okay as they are, um, where it's being spent now. Um, roadways, uh, housing, um, supporting homeless and things like this. I think that, that's where the money should be going to. Mostly on social, uh, to help other people. Like you see a lot of homeless people more than you ever used to. And I think we've sort of had a void in that particular area for too long. Um, I think general care is a big one, like more walk-in clinics. Um, for like simple things, our baby, you know, if he's got 
a fever or, or something and it's not really an emergency but you have to make an appointment with a doctor it's sometimes it's hard to get quick help for a, a worried parent in this country and military spending dare I say um, I know yeah um, right now yeah I think it'd be good to put some into that our military is hurting a lot um, I think there should be more uh, money spent on infrastructure uh, housing is a big one here in, in Halifax there's a big problem with housing uh, I also think there should be more money allocated for education climate uh, climate justice climate action and conservation climate conservation um, on the people on services on kids schools and definitely number one health care not for our Prime Minister's trips and travels. Well, all the infrastructure stuff, we need roads and bridges and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I always want to see more money put into the arts, but that's me. <laughs> um, uh, immigration, I would say. Uh, I think it can be sorted out a little bit better. Well, right now, look at the public road. They're disgraceful. There are a lot of roads are not fit to even drive on. I think they, we could use it there. you got a housing problem in Canada. Uh, seniors, they got problem with housing. They're not finding housing. Tax dollars should be best spent in our own pockets. <laughs> when you're making, working, making, you know, $10,000 a month offshore, you shouldn't be paying 60% of that to, uh, to the government. We should be able to keep some more of that. So I'd say best spent in our own pockets. Healthcare, healthcare education. I'm not in any particular order, but I think that's where the money needs to be spent. We need to take care of our young coming up, and we need to take care of our, our, all of our citizens, especially our older citizens, our elderly people uh, who've worked all their life, contributed to the growth of Canada. I think they need to be uh, supported uh, any way possible, and healthcare being the big one. On seniors. <laughs> I think there should be some more home, homes for the homeless and better uh, accommodation for seniors, uh, able to have a better quality of life and a better home. Everything is so expensive here and like everything is going up and our income isn't. Oh, there's so many things where tax dollars can go. <laughs> um, I think that uh, there should be some assistance for seniors. A lot of seniors are uh, having issues with um, just trying to make ends meet. Uh, health care is a huge issue, and I know that there's a lot of money spent on health care now, uh, but that's not to say that, that there could be some ways that it could be done more effectively and more efficiently. Um, preparing, uh, the government can do things probably to prepare uh, the young people for the future. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how that could go. But there's things that I'm sure they can do to help uh, prepare the young people for the future, giving them uh, motivation and incentives and, and different things to do. Uh, those are, are some of the top things that I think. Okay. Climate change is huge. Climate change is huge. Parliament consists of how many parts? One, two, or three? Three. Two. I'd say two as well. Three? Three. 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 Two. Two. What's your guess? I'm guessing two. I'm guessing three. Two parts. The House yeah. of Commons and the Senate. Two. Yes. Two yes, parts. two. Yeah. Three. It's three. You got it right, bro. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Parliament consists of three parts. The monarch the Senate, and the House of Commons. These three parts combine to decide laws and determine policies. The monarch, King Charles III, is our head of state, but his powers are limited by the Constitution. This system is known as a constitutional monarchy. His official duties are usually carried out by the Governor General. The Senate. Canada's Senate consists of 105 members from across Canada, which acts essentially as a reviewing chamber on proposed bills before they are passed, which is why it is also known as the Chamber of Sober Second Thought. The House of Commons. 
members of parliament propose, debate, and vote on legislation. They are elected to the House from 338 different areas of the country, which are called ridings. Together, these three parts decide on policies and laws that affect all Canadians. There are some people in this country who feel the health care system has failed them and it's not working the way it was meant to be. There are also others who worry whether or not the health care system will be there for them if and when they need it. Nursing and doctor shortages in hospitals across the country, of course, exacerbate the situation. We sent our cameras out to ask people how we can achieve better access to health care for everyone. Our question. What are your ideas to improve Canada's health care system? Uh, just entice doctors to come into the country. Um, just, um, uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Just get pe pro professionals here, give them incentive. Uh, yeah, again, affordable housing is linked with that as well. Uh, everything goes back to affordable housing, essentially. So, yeah. We need more doctors. That's the big one. And we need to be more accepting and recognizing of people's education from different countries as being valid and uh, not being so critical because there's uh, my wife's from Mexico so we see that in Mexico healthcare is more readily available and people get what they need quickly and here my mother waited two years for her knee surgery and as a result had back issues hip issues from all the time she had to wait as a result so we can improve on that. So I think we should invest in students. There should be more uh, medical schools in, in, in Nova Scotia. There should be more in New Brunswick. I know New Brunswick only has uh, one, and that's part of Dalhousie's medical school. Um, so yeah, more medical schools. There should be more doctors, internationally trained doctors here in, in Canada. They're not able to get their licenses, from what I've heard. Um, and. These are some aspects that we can, uh, you know, fund healthcare and, and improve it, as well as, uh, you know, I guess, uh, investing in research, investing in medical research. It's a long-term investment that could reap rewards in the long term, and it will put us ahead in in in, in terms of world healthcare. <laughs> Oh, now there's the trick question, okay. Uh, whoever solves it is going to be a hero because they're going to bring peace to our uh, health crisis in the system. Is I think it needs to move from underneath the management of the provinces to a global medical system so that doctors and nurses and resources, the, you know the important stuff that takes care of people, that those people can move from province to province and go to where they're needed most. Well, for starters, we need to bring in more doctors and make it more um, something that they want to come to as opposed to all of our doctors going to the States, uh, paying the nurses. We have enough facilities. We're from Alberta and we do have the facilities. We just don't have enough people that actually can utilize it to give the public the services they need. We don't need to wait six months to a year for cataract surgery. Infrastructure and nurses and doctors incentivizing those types of jobs. Uh, I know that they do have a lot of incentives put in place to get nurses and doctors to stay, but it doesn't seem like there's so much uh, strain on the healthcare system right now. And they're pumping out so many new students and stuff like that, but nobody seems to want to stay here. And I'm, I'm not sure what it is they'd have to do to get them to stay, honestly, because I'm in the healthcare uh, myself, I'm a PCA. And it just seems like you're, there's not enough staff to, to um, patient ratio, so you can't really give proper care. Uh, I think it's different in every province, every jurisdiction. Um, but I believe that uh, if money is going to be well spent in our health care, our provincial government has to look at what exactly the needs are and um, do more of an analysis rather than a shotgun approach in, uh, in spending. Privatize healthcare, I would say. Why? Because if you go anywhere that's privatized health, that's where you go. Like if you have something really wrong with you, and we're not getting dealt with here, which is most of the time, you go somewhere where it's privatized, and you get the care you need. You know what I mean? Like if you go to the states, a lot of people go to the states now for healthcare, and they just pay out of pocket for it because it means they're getting the care that they need and they deserve. And 
I think we need to do better on wait times. I think we need to do better on recruiting, getting doctors, getting nurses in rural Newfoundland. I'll speak to rural Newfoundland or Newfoundland in general. We have a major issue getting doctors, uh, keeping doctors in rural Newfoundland, uh, training more nurses, making it more readily available, more, more cost, uh, I guess, making it more affordable for young people to get into the nursing and into the doctor profession. Um, so definitely I think we need to certainly concentrate on the health care and spend more money recruiting and keeping a continuous, as someone graduates, a doctor graduates and goes into practice, there's someone else coming right behind him. People who want to go into the medical profession, they shouldn't have to pay for their education as long as they work in that profession for a certain length of time. We also need better hospital capacity. Uh, the the uh, regional and federal governments have been too stingy for too long, and now, the, now there's, it almost looks as if there's nothing to be done about it. <laughs> um, stop paying for travel nurses and just actually pay the nurses that we have a decent amount of money so they don't leave and come back through the travel program because that's what our government is forcing them to do. We're Sound, not nurses. That no, is a non-biased <laughs> opinion. <laughs> Sounds reasonable to me, yeah. Uh, one small idea, minor, but I think could have an impact, is allow retired doctors to come back to work. There's a lot of retired doctors out there that aren't allowed to practice anymore because they've given up their billing number and they uh, had to you know, give up that right to practice. But I know, I know personally of some of them would be happy to come back for even a few hours a week. And I think if a few hours a week for many of them gave them, you know, a, a, not a purpose, but gave them, motivated them, they wanted to do it and they're willing to help, then why wouldn't we allow them to help? And I think that's something that's so simple to fix here in New Brunswick and just hasn't been looked into. Canada's a big country. We're the second largest country in the world. And with that comes a diversity of natural beauty that expands as far as the eye can see. So once again, we set out to ask people what it is about where they live or even where they come from originally that is so distinctive. Our question. What makes your part of the country unique? Um, I think probably the people, honestly. I'm from Nova Scotia, so not too far away, but PEI, I've always felt welcomed. Um, although it's not a big province, it still feels really small. The community is great. Um, the people. I'd say the smallness and the closeness, um, both in proximity and just in general, because since the people are, you know, so close they get to know everybody in the community and it yeah I just think that it makes people help each other and be more empathetic with one another. What do I think makes PEI unique? The Red Roads! Uh, I, I've only been here for a couple weeks so um, honestly I think I think just the geography of it makes it unique truly like Oh, well, PI is really beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a unique, uh, like, a part of uh, Canada. So I really love this. Like, I've been living here for four years. It's really unique for me, yeah. Oh, uh, well, it's an island, so it, it already has a little bit of a different vibe because it's an island. Um, I think the scale is smaller, so it's really easy to get to know people in a certain way. It's easy to get access to your politicians, it's easy to, you know, it's just the scale makes things much more accessible, I think. Fredericton in particular, you kind of have like the best of both worlds. It doesn't have a huge array of amenities that a big city does, but it has some like good dining and shopping, but it still feels like a small town, which I really love. Yeah, so. the people are so friendly here, yeah. and but it still has like the inclusiveness of a big city and it has like the beautiful brick buildings, it's beautiful to walk down, the old trees, old Good buildings. Like the history and stuff like that too, yeah. yeah. I think the nature, part of it is the landscape that we have. We have beaches within a couple of hours from here and then here we have nature, walking trails. Um, yeah, you can go from nature to urban to beach to hiking just within a few hours and I think it's not everywhere that you can have that true saltwater beach experience and that true freshwater fishing and then a few minutes or a couple of hours away you can go hiking. So I think that's pretty unique to New Brunswick. Definitely the coast, Bay of Fundy for sure, the, the tides. And Fredericton is very friendly, Lots that's of, unique. Yeah, biking trails as well, we have a good selection of them. Oh, well, New Brunswick has a lot of scenery for like great food and great trails and everything. So being surrounded by nature is, I would say, the main characteristic of this amazing province. 
Well, the province itself is beautiful. The people are fantastic. Uh, such a thing as this morning, just walking through the park, people stop to speak to you, say hello to you. You don't know them, but they're just willing to speak to you. It makes for a good day, start of a good day. Compared to other parts of the countries and other cities, I think we're one of the better ones to, to live in as we're feeling contented and safe. Again, we won't talk about the weather. <laughs> I think our culture, I think the mere fact that we live in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean uh, makes us different. We have to be uh, a little bit more adaptable to our surroundings as we live in a harsh environment. And uh, just think our culture in general and our, our traditions make us unique and different than the rest of Canada. Uh, so many things. Uh, we're an island. Uh, we're very uh, kind, considerate, compassionate people, and uh, we're very friendly. That's the, the people. The island itself, uh, it's beautiful. Uh, it's probably, it may be safer than most other places, and uh, it's just beautiful. What makes Newfoundland unique? The people. The people are fantastic here. They are friendly. They're obliging, they're kind, and they got a good sense of humor. <laughs> it's a lot of things. I think what sets us apart is our hospitality. Our, uh, we create our own awareness of uh, where we live, uh, our sense of place, I guess, if you want to call it. Um, and uh, we're welcoming people. I've always, wa I've always been close to the water, and that's really important for my mental health. <laughs> Um, and Maritimers are pretty friendly, mostly. What makes it unique here, uh, these, it feels like it's my people. I mean, uh, we're all kind of a little lower income, and um, yeah, we just help each other to get by. People help each other more here, I find. Just our openness to strangers, uh, accepting anybody for who they are. Um, we're a very accepting and welcoming country. Thanks for watching this episode of Outburst on CPAC. If you have any comments about this show or any other show, you can find us on social media. You can also find us on our website at www.cpac.ca. I'm Glenn McGinnis, and on behalf of my colleagues at the Cable Public Affairs Channel, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.